Oh, oh these new data worry scientists and show that we are probably in the middle of a termination event of the ice age. The reason is incredibly high amounts of methane in the atmosphere that no one saw coming. How could it come to this? What does this termination event mean for us and what can we do about it? You'll find out in this video, so be sure to stay tuned to the end. If you like it, I'm galactically happy to get a thumbs up and a comment, because that's how we get the YouTube algorithm to show this important topic to even more people. Thanks a lot guys and welcome. What do you think of when you hear the term Ice Age? Probably Manny and Sit from the Ice Age movies. Bon appetit. But what very few people know, we live in an ice age. Heard correctly. The global climate is relatively cool compared to past eras. If one takes alone times the dinosaur times, in which it was much warmer and the CO2 levels were up to four times higher and thereby the diversity of species exploded. Many species could reach immense sizes under these conditions. Today it is much cooler, but it is not exactly the peak of an ice age either. About 20,000 years ago, massive glacier reached into Central Europe, as you can see here. That means you could have had a fantastic ski vacation on the German seacoast. Today, you would just go swimming with your skis in the Baltic Sea. And that's why many scientists talk about the interglacial Holocene, a temporary warm phase within a larger ice age. But now there are indications that this ice age may be coming to an end, that a so-called termination event has been set in motion. Hasta la vista, baby. And that has something to do with methane. But always in order, let's clear this up from the bottom. Methane leads to and few shade be there beside its much more often fearfully mentioned gaseous brother CO2 and that, although methane plays a crucial role for the Earth climate. Methane is an even far more potent greenhouse gas, but its peculiarity is that it has a relatively short residence time in the atmosphere. With methane, we are talking about a few years compared to centuries that CO2 can linger in the atmosphere. So methane is kind of the rowdier brother of CO2, but it runs out of steam faster. In the history of the Earth, methane has always played an important role as a signal that an ice age is coming to an end, and these transitions are called terminations. and they were always marked by sharp increases of methane in the atmosphere. So kind of what you can measure at home when you had been stew for dinner. <laughs> but today we are not talking about such private termination events, but about the global variant. And then you ask yourself, how can you check which increases of which greenhouse gas there were in the distant past? Answer, these methane increases are documented in air bubbles in ice cores, and geoscientists and climate scientists can thus precisely date the transition from an icy world to a warmer one. Here it comes, check out these statistics. Analyses of data have now shown that methane levels have been rising massively since 2006. This current increase in methane in the atmosphere looks just like past termination events, and as the saying goes, if you see a bird that walks like a duck and swims like a duck and quacks like a duck, you call that bird a duck. Does that saying even exist? I'm not sure. But what I'm saying is, if it looks like a termination event because of the methane rise, then it's probably a duck. Ah, uh, a termination event, and that's where I hear some of you moaning in resignation now. And it's our fault again, right? Not necessarily. Scientists are still unsure exactly where the cause lies here, but it is striking that the sharp increase only began around the year 2006. That kind of argues against human activity being the direct main factor here. Let's take a look at the worldwide CO2 emissions as a comparative value. This curve has been rising massively since the middle of the 20th century and from 2006 onwards we see, if at all, a slight flattening with a tendency to plateau. If we take CO2 emissions as an indicator of human climate-related activities, then it doesn't look like this could be the main factor behind the methane increase. Moreover, we know that human methane emissions rose sharply in the 1980s with the expansion of the natural gas industry, but then stabilized again by the 1990s. But what is it then? What is causing the ice age to be terminated? The beans due, though? You and Nisbet. 
Emeritus Professor of Earth Sciences at the University of London has published a study on the current termination and he says, within termination that lasts thousands of years, there is this abrupt phase that lasts only a few decades. During this abrupt phase, methane is rising rapidly, and it's probably driven by tropical wetlands. So, although it is still controversial, it appears that these wetlands are the source of methane, especially in Africa. The drivers of the termination, the bringers of the warm period, the killers of the interglacial Holocene, and so on. And why is this happening? Increasing precipitation has made wetlands in Africa wetter and larger, while increasing temperatures have promoted plant growth, which in turn leads to more decomposition processes and thus more methane. So, in principle, this is exactly the effect that, in its extreme form, then led to conditions like those of the dinosaur era. Also the thawing of the permafrost in Siberia, which has already produced several frozen historical animal monikers, like this baby mammoth, contributes to that. And it's a bit of a self-reinforcing effect then, more methane thaws the permafrost, and the thawing of the permafrost in turn produces more methane. Ewan Nisbet said, although the evidence is not yet conclusive, it is worth considering the scale of such a climate shift. In the past, terminations have transformed large swaths of icy tundra in the northern hemisphere into tropical grasslands where hippos roam. Of course, the change in climate conditions of wetlands in Africa is also due to anthropogenic climate change. But also by other processes that we do not yet understand 100%. Such as the Milankovic Cycles a detailed video on this exciting topic I made a few months ago and linked to you here. The relevant question now is, what can we do about it, no matter what the cause? Is there any way to reduce methane emissions again? There are a few points that could be addressed. In the oil and gas industry, there are often leaks from which methane escapes. So here you could pay close attention to sealing these promptly. In addition, landfills are a significant source of methane emissions. Covering landfills with soil or other materials can prevent methane from entering the atmosphere. And agriculture, with its livestock, is of course an immensely large producer of methane, but also incredibly important to humanity. In Ireland, for example, there is currently a discussion about slaughtering 200,000 cows in the next few years in order to achieve the Irish climate targets. Well, I have to be honest and say that I find that super disconcerting. We're killing 200,000 animals to achieve our self-imposed political goals. Well, I think that killing living beings as emitters of CO2 and methane is a Pandora's box that we should keep closed. The right way would rather be to use advanced technologies to reduce methane emissions in agriculture without killing anyone. Let's see how the termination event develops, of course I'll keep you updated about it. But you can only do that if you subscribe to my channel. And from the YouTube statistics I know that more than half of all viewers do not subscribe to the channel at all. It's absolutely free, helps me immensely and you won't miss any more galactic videos. So guys, everybody press the subscribe button. Let's get back to global climate. One thing that would completely overturn all climate models would be the eruption of a super volcano. And indeed, not only the Yellowstone volcano is under observation, but also the Phlegraean fields in Italy. They've been causing volcanologists more and more concern in recent weeks. How likely is an eruption? You can find out all about this in the video shown here, so be sure to watch it. There is also spectacular original footage of these supervolcanoes. Otherwise I would say see you in the next video. Take care guys.